Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is just one of over 80 episodes we release monthly. Now, let's get into this episode. A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Let's go, big fellow. I'll still In general, the Indian tribes in the Southwest Territory had been subdued, with the exception of a ruthless band of Apaches under the leadership of Chief Running Horse, who with his braves had been driven southward from New Mexico Territory and were settled west of the Pecos. Time after time, they struck without warning. One time, it would be against a small wagon train of pioneers. Get up there. Get up. Get along. Well, Jed, we're almost there. We sure have been lucky. Yep. My wife's been scared to death we'd run into Indians. But I guess they're all under control now. I was thinking about them myself for a while. But now I guess they Look, coming over the hill. Redskins. Holy smoke. Circle the wagons. They're attacking us. Hurry. Get the wagons. Circle. We won't have a chance. And from time to time, Running Horse led his braves in raids on small settlements, usually at dawn when the townspeople were unprepared. Morning, Joe. Looking in the express office kind of early, ain't you? Yeah. Got a stage due in early from Phantom Hill with an express shipment. Sure hated to roll out with the sun hardly up yet. But... Indians, it's a raid. Everybody will be massacred in their beds. Start shooting around them. Right. brazen and ruthless raids of Chief Running Horse and his braves were of great concern to Colonel Anderson, commandant of Fort Stockton. His efforts to run down the Apache band or to arrange a powwow with Chief Running Horse had been useless. 
One afternoon, he was discussing the situation with Lieutenant Downey in his headquarters. Chief Running Horse and his savage band must be stopped at any cost, Lieutenant. Their killing and plundering have aroused protests even from Washington. I know, sir. I asked for reinforcements so we might try to wipe out the chief and his tribe, but... Well, here's a dispatch I received from the powers that be. It came this morning. Uh-huh. We suggest it will be more desirable to make a peace treaty with Chief Running Horse. Since such a treaty will influence many other tribes still unfriendly to our occupation in the West. Yeah, what do you think of that? They don't realize the situation, sir. In my opinion, Chief Running Horse and his savage tribe deserve to be wiped out. And the sooner the better. Of course. But our opinions don't count in the matter. That so-called uh, suggestion is really a command, as you know. Yes, sir, I do know. Puts us on the spot. We lost six fine men trying to plan a meeting with a running horse. That's true, sir. He's too treacherous to approach even under a flag of truce. Yet, according to that dispatch, we're supposed to... Ma- <clears throat> Come in. Beg your pardon, sir. Uh, what is it, Sergeant? Mago, the Indian scout has arrived, sir. He says he must see you right away. He brings an important message from Chief Running Horse. A message from Chief Running Horse? Bring Mago here immediately, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Colonel will see you, Mago. What do you make of it, Colonel? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. Here he comes. Go right in. Uh, now, me bring message for White Chief. Is it uh, really a message from Chief Running Horse? Ah, that right. Mago captured by Apaches. Them take Mago to Chief Running Horse. Mago think maybe him die at stake. What happened? Chief Running Horse say him let Mago go. If Mago take message to White Chief at Fort, me bring message. Well, this is a break, Lieutenant. What is the message, Mago? Chief Running Horse say White Chief of Fort bring officers come Indian village two suns from now at sunrise. That means day after tomorrow, sir. I know. What's the reason Chief Running Horse would have us come to his village, Mago? Him say come for powwow, talk of peace. Mm. What proof do you bring that the chief sends this message? Me bring wampum belt from chief. Here. I see. What do you make of it, Lieutenant? That's an Apache chief's wampum belt, all right, sir. And I guess Mago speaks the truth. It's hard to believe. Uh, Mago tell truth. Get wampum from Chief Running Horse. Him say, Mago, bring back answer, pronto. You tell Chief Running Horse I'll come to his village with my officers for the powwow at sunup, two suns from now. Ah, me tell him. Me go now. Colonel Anderson, how do you know this isn't a trick, a trap, sir? Chief Running Horse is treacherous. I know, but we won't go into his village without being on guard, Lieutenant. This is our chance, and I can't let it go by. We'll have to take the risk. That evening, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had stopped to camp in the hills along the trail between the Apache village and the fort. As they prepared supper, the two men talked. We've come here, Toto, to offer our help in subduing Chief Running Horse and his savage tribe. Uh, me know. Before we go on to the fort, I'd like to figure out some plan of action that I could lay before Colonel Anderson. That's good idea, Kimasabe. Well, after we eat, we'll ride over toward the Indian village and see how they're situated. And perhaps we can think of something. Drastic action will have to be taken against the chief and his braves before they go on the war path again. Later that night, the Lone Ranger and Toto left their camp and rode toward the Indian encampment. They finally stopped on a bluff from which they could look down upon the village below. Oh, Silver Right, Tonto. We'll walk to the edge of the bluff and look over Chief Running Horse's encampment. Uh-huh. It's easy to see. They're rider right coming to camp by Valley Trail. Yes, he's stopping there near the big campfire. As far as I can make out, he's an army Indian scout, Tonto. Ah. Uh-huh. And look, Kimasabi. What? Chief come out of Wigwam. And them talk together. Yes. That must be Chief Running Horse. Now he's making some sort of hand sign to the group. That's right. Oh, him 
Give news that Indian scout bring. I'd certainly like to know what news he brought. Indian scout, mount now. Him get ready to leave village. Let's get back to the horses, Tonto. Hurry. Uh, and what we do now, Kimus, hurry. We're going to follow that scout after he leaves the village. Easy, big foot. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Taking a trail that leads to Fort Stockton. Isn't that right? We better slow down before we go around that turn ahead. We don't want him to find us too close, easy fella. Easy, steady, big fella. Steady, fella. Steady. steady. Here's the bend in the trail. Be ready to stop if he's still in sight. Uh, wait, Kim, stop him. Oh, oh. Look. Him turn off and branch trail. And not look back. Strange. That branch trail leads into a small basin. Just a short way from the main trail. Ah. I'm out of sight now. Yes, we'll follow him. We'll have to be cautious. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Riding slowly, the Lone Ranger and Toto turned into the branch trail behind the man they were following. Within a short time, they neared the small basin the masked man had mentioned and stopped. We'll leave the horses here in this clump of trees, Tonto. While we go by foot to the bluff overlooking the basin. All right, come on. Ah. Moving quietly, the two men walked to the low bluff from which they could see into the small basin. Arriving there, they cautiously peered over the edge. Look, Tonto. Small band of Indians are camped there. Ah. And them unloading rifles from pack horse. Look like. Yes. Me see when light a campfire. Them Apaches, Kimasabi. Must be some of Chief Running Horse's braves. Not right. I don't know what they're getting ready for. There's some reason for that band of Apaches to be here. Uh, and it not good. Uh, I wonder. You put up hands. You not move or me kill. It Indian scout. Him come up behind us. Ah. Uh. Me find out you follow. Me take horse in a basin. Then me come out on foot, hide in bushes and watch. I see. When you go up past the bluff, me go follow. All right. You have the drop on us. Now what? It good me catch outlaws. You plan steal Indian rifles, maybe. We're not outlaws. We not come to steal rifles. You go down pass at go in a camp. Me take outlaw spies to Apaches. Apache brave soon torture truth from you. Now, you go. For a moment, the masked man stood motionless before the glaring half-breed with a pointed gun. Then, with a meaningful smile, he gazed beyond Mago and slightly nodded his head as if signaling someone behind the half-breed. For a few seconds, Mago quickly glanced around. Those few seconds were enough. The Lone Ranger moved fast. I'll take that gun. Uh, do you not take him? So quiet. You. No. Oh, oh. you not need help. Him still wonder what happened. He fell for an old trick, Tonto. Let's get back to the horses. Uh, you hit him plenty hard and chin. Yes. Ember! Ember! He's yelling to the Indians. Ah, uh, then come out of basin. We get the horses quick. Come on. We'll be coming out in a minute. There are the horses. It was almost an hour before the Lone Ranger and Tonto shook off the Indian band and stopped to rest their horses some miles from their camp. Oh, 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 oh. It better we not try to fight Indians. Seem like many in band. Yes, that's right. I'd like to know the reason why they're camped in that hidden basin. It's just off the main trail to the fort. Ah. And what we do now? It's late, Toto. We'll head back to camp and rest a while. Then in the morning, we'll ride to the fort and talk to the colonel. One silver! You must count! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. It was just at the break of dawn when Colonel Anderson was awakened in his quarters by the sergeant. Colonel, wake up, sir. Oh, it's you, sergeant. What's the matter? Migo's here with important information. Says he has to see you right away, sir. Well, bring him in right now, sergeant. Yes, sir. Let's see, I better look presentable. Here, Lieutenant Downey. Lieutenant. What? Yes, Colonel. Get up quickly. Mago is here with important information. The sergeant is bringing him right in. Yes, sir. Get these boots on. There. Just about ready to see him now. I wonder if Chief Running Boss has changed his mind, sir. I can't say, but we'll soon know. Come in. Here's Mago, sir. Good morning, Mago. Oh. Well, you can leave now, sergeant. Yes, sir. What brings you here so early, Mago? Has the Apache chief changed his mind? Him not change mind. Me come here, tell our outlaws who try sell rifles to Apaches. Gun runners, eh? Go on. Outlaws, two. One mask, other Indian, come camp to sell rifles to Apaches. Chief running horse want make peace. Him have braves chase outlaws, them get way. How do we know Chief Running Horse did this? Chief Running Horse tell Mago bring pack horse with rifles to White Chief at Fort as proof. Warn White Chief about outlaws. Yes, the chief is really trying to show us he wants peace, Colonel. Yeah, that's right. Lieutenant, you go out with Mago and check his story about bringing a pack horse loaded with rifles. Yes, sir. And send out some troopers to hunt them. Warn the entire battalion to be on the lookout for a masked outlaw and an Indian. Yes, sir, right away. Come along, Mago. Uh. Mago, you tell Chief Running Horse we're convinced now that he speaks the truth when he says he wants peace. We'll be happy to meet him at the powwow tomorrow morning. Later that morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along the trail that led to Fort Stockton. When I meet the colonel at the fort, I'll tell him about the Apache band in the Hidden Basin. Ah, and him better know about Indian Scout, too. Yes, Tonto. I can't figure out just what his part in the affair is yet. Look, Kimasabi. What? You see dust cloud along trail ahead. There are many men. Yes, Oh, I believe they're troopers from the fort. Well, that's not good. Maybe the mask about mask, Kimasabi. That's all right, Tato. I'll tell them to take me to the colonel at the fort. I'll do the explaining to him. If we continue to ride toward them, I'm sure we'll have no trouble. Them see us for this time. Yes, I guess they do. Them shoot at us. Quick, Tato. Turn right into the arroyo. We'll head back down the trail. What's the Come on, scout. Knowing they couldn't get close enough to explain and not wishing to shoot at the troopers, the Lone Ranger and Tonto quickly turned aside into an arroyo and headed back along the trail. The troopers followed, but after a time they were outdistanced and finally lost. The Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to their camp, where for some time they carefully disguised the Lone Ranger's features. That afternoon he rode alone to the entrance to the fort, while Tonto waited a short distance away. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady, big fellow. What do you want, mister? I've come to see Colonel Anderson. Take me to his headquarters. All right, bring your horse and come on. I'll see what the sergeant says about it. Come on, boy. Easy. Hey, Sarge. What's the matter, Corporal? This man says he wants to see the colonel. Oh, What's your business with the colonel, mister? I have some news concerning the Apaches. All right, Corporal. I'll take him to the colonel's headquarters. You come with me, mister. All right. A short time later, the Lone Ranger, with his features disguised, was ushered into the colonel's quarters. Come in. This is a man who wanted to see you, sir. Oh, come in, sir, and explain your visit. Thank you, colonel. Sit down, mister. Uh, thanks. The name doesn't matter, Colonel Anderson. Perhaps this will make me known to you. What's it? A silver bullet. And you must be... Yes, I tried to get to you sooner, but I was wearing a mask. A and mask, I into... yes. I've heard that you usually wear one. Tell me, do you ride with an Indian? That's right. Uh, some of your men fired on us this morning before we could stop and explain. Well, our Indian scout, Mago, reported a mask man, an Indian, had tried to sell rifles to some of the Apaches. He brought in a pack horse with some of the rifles as proof. Chief Running Horse sent him here early this morning. That's not true, Colonel. That Indian scout lied. Lied? Yes, we followed him from the Apache village to a hidden basin where we saw more Apaches. Oh, I don't quite understand. You see, 
Chief Running Horse sent word that he was willing to meet us at his village at sunup tomorrow for a powwow. Mago is the go-between. I see. Those Apaches camped in the hidden basin just off the main trail could be there for the purpose of cutting you off from the fort. Cut it? What do you mean? I believe Mago the scout is working with Chief Running Horse to lead you into a trap, sir. I wouldn't be surprised if he were the go-between who's been getting them the rifles. Well, then why should he... Mago uh, got the drop on Toto and me. So we tricked him and got away. I see. He's sly enough to know that reporting us as outlaws and bringing that pack horse here, saying running horse sent him, would dismiss any doubts you might have about the Apache's peaceful intentions. Yet I feel that we should go to that powwow on the chance they do want peace. I have orders from Washington stating I'm to try to make a peace treaty. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Mago heard about that dispatch somehow and tipped off the Apaches. Mm, it's possible. I'll send out men to see about the band of Indians in that hidden basin right away. I know, Colonel. I uh, suggest you wait until just before you set out for the powwow. Furthermore, I'd like to go with you and your officers, if I may, sir. Yes, that can be arranged all right. But if they're planning a trap... I have a plan, Colonel. I hope we'll stop any treacherous move they might make. Now, listen. After carefully discussing the plan, the Lone Ranger left the fort and joined Tonto. The two men rode back to their camp in the hills, where they worked over a new disguise, but this time Tonto was the subject. During the night, they rode from camp and separated, Tonto riding toward the Apache village and the Lone Ranger riding to Fort Stockton. Dawn was breaking when Colonel Anderson, accompanied by his officers and the Lone Ranger, arrived at the Apache village and dismounted before Chief Running Horse's large wigwam. Indian braves stood in groups nearby watching, and the Lone Ranger noted that there were no squaws or children to be seen. Off to one side, a council group of blanketed Indians sat on the ground in a semicircle waiting. Chief Running Horse stood with arms folded inside a ceremonial blanket, and Mago, the Indian scout, stood beside him to act as interpreter. The chief spoke. Oh, Rodemota, big chief running horse say, welcome, white chief and his men. Tell chief running horse we come in peace, that we're ready for the powwow. May tua lo, o may latte. Ah, may to lo, gun. Not good. The chief knows and understands some English. Yes. Mago, what is it the chief said? Him say, take off gun belt, hang on saddle, then join circle for powwow. I suppose there's nothing else to do. I guess not. There's mine. And mine, sir. One by one, the officers took off their gun belts and hung them on their saddles. Before removing his gun belt, the Lone Ranger glanced keenly at the circle of blanketed Indians a short distance away. Then he too removed his gun belt and hung it from the pommel of his saddle. All right, Mago. Tell Chief Running Horse we're unarmed and ready to join the council circle. Ua mo zela. Yometola. Him say, leave horse there. Come join power. Good. Come on, gentlemen. Yes, sir. This is risky business. Yes, I know. Don't worry, Colonel. A place in the center of the semicircle had been left for the chief. Squatting down, he motioned for the officers to fill in the circle. This is it. Yes. Mago's standing in the center of the circle. He has something to say. Listen. White chief from Fort. You big fool. Apaches in council circle have guns under blankets. You old men, now prisoners of Apaches. As the officers sat momentarily stunned, gazing at the leering face of Mago, the blanketed figure to the left of Chief Running Horse suddenly sprang behind the chief and placed a gun at his back. Me have gun at back of Chief Running Horse. If anyone move. Me kill him. That's Toto. This guy's is an Apache. You tell council braves, drop guns. Uda, Uda, right, They're dropping their guns. Here's the list. Now I've got my guns. You not get away. All braves in village ready with guns. And tell them to look up to the rim of the cliffs, Mago. A 
hundred troopers are there with rifles aimed down here at the village. Get your guns, Colonel. Right. You men, get your sidearms. Right. I'll make go. Tell the chief we're taking him and you with us to the entrance to the valley. My men have brought two horses for you to ride. We won't make it, Colonel. The Apache Braves have found out something's going on. They're moving in. Give your signal to the troopers. All right. For several minutes, the battle raged. The Lone Ranger moved quickly to Chief Running Horse's side and spoke rapidly. I'll tell your Braves to stop fighting. Or it'll all be wiped out. Tell them. Ume Leite! Ume Leite! Listen, some of my troopers are coming into the valley. Thanks to you and your Indian friend, we stopped running horse in his Apache treachery. Colonel, troopers were sent to the base and captured all the Apaches waiting there. Good, good. Lieutenant Downey. Yes, sir. Tell the men to round up everyone in the village and keep them under guard until they can be sent to a reservation. We'll take the chief and that traitorous Indian scout, Mago, back to the fort with us. Yes, sir. They won't give us any more trouble, sir. Well, Colonel, it seems everything is under control. Uh, <laughs> Apaches not expect trick. <laughs> you played your part well, Toto. Pull off that headdress and Apache regalia before some trooper thinks you are one. Now, <laughs> where's Scott? Well, him hidden outside entrance in Arroyo. You can ride out there on silver with me, then. Easy, big fellow. Adios, Colonel. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye, my friends, and many thanks. Monsilver! Colonel, may I ask who that tall man is, sir? He's mighty clever to come up with a plan without with these Apaches. He's clever, all right, and so is his Indian friend. They're the two so-called outlaws we sent men out to hunt yesterday. See, that tall man usually wears a mask. A mask? Yes. He's known in this territory as one of the bravest men in the West. The Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.